how to build your RC car. This is the completed deal. It's got wood wheels on the back and little plastic ones in the front. It's got a receiver here that takes information from the antenna, is powered by the battery with the switch, and then it sends four different currents out to the bad to the motors back here and makes them either go forward or backwards. So let's build the car. Now the way you're going to build it of course is to start off with just the bare bones piece of cardboard. This is eight and a half by eleven inches. And uh, the first thing to do is to put your front wheels on. Now the front wheels on this car on this car I made them super strong. I put double stick tape on the cardboard and then I also put double stick tape over the straw. Um, that may not be necessary but you know it's up to you. If, if you start if your front wheels start coming off then put the double stick tape on over the top as well. So basically you just need a little square of double stick tape or rectangle as the case may be. and just put it right on the front of the car. Now, depending upon where you put it, if you put it right at the front, then the wheels can hit the desk that you crashed into. So I'm gonna put it back a little bit. If it's farther forward, it's more stable, it's longer for the wheelbase, but if you put it back a little bit, then you have kind of an automatic built-in bumper here. So let's put it like so on one side. and the same distance out on the other side. Now notice the way the double stick tape goes right to the edge. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna cut a straw that will be just like the straw here. That's like the bearing that the um, wooden axle spins in. And you wanna make it so it's long enough so that it goes past the edge of the car, but not real long, because if it's real long, then it's gonna have the wheel be so far away from the car, it's more likely to crash into things. So you want to hug the car pretty good. So as you can see here, one way to think about it is this guy is four inches wide. So I could cut this like four and a half inches. Or else you can just look at the car and say, okay, that's how wide the car is. I'm just gonna eyeball it here. And then I can say, well, let's have just a little bit longer than the car. Not much, like a millimeter longer, hardly anything and then just cut off. So this is gonna be the tube that the axle goes in. And of course, you're gonna put wheels on the ends, and then the wheels are going to be mounted on top of the double stick tape axle there. Okay, so one of the tricks is that the wheels are 1 8 inch diameter hole, and this is 1 8 inch dowel. So in some cases, the dowel is tight, but in this case, see how the dowel is not very tight, which means that the wheel will just fall right off. So I have a very funky way to make it so it stays on. You'll find a little piece of orange wire that's been stripped inside your packet. And that's not an accident. What you wanna do is you wanna cut off a little piece of the wire. And I found that the way that works pretty well is just take your razor blade, put it down on your chopping block and just press hard and it'll cut through because this copper is not that hard. Okay, now this guy is gonna go inside the wheel and then just fold it down on both sides like that. So it just goes through the hole in the middle and then if you take that and try to force the wooden dowel on, man, it just turns out to be the right width so that it's nice and tight. Now you have this piece of wire that's sticking out. Not for long, you don't. All you need to do is take it and cut off with the razor blade on both sides. Okay, so this guy I'm gonna cut off against the wood. Now we have something which is on there nice and tight. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side but before we put it on the other side, we have to put the wheel onto the car. So let's take a little closer look at what's going on. 
So what I'd recommend you do is take off the double stick tape on both sides. And then very carefully put the straw so it's the same distance over each edge and is parallel to the car. Just put it down carefully. And then put the stick inside. Don't press the straw down from the top. Put the stick inside and press down that way. Because if you, if you press down from the top, you're gonna to bend the straw. So just press down like that and get it so it's nice and bonded with the tape. Other side, put it in, press down. See, I'm going back and forth a little bit so it just bonds to the tape. Now, if you decide that you want to put on more double stick tape to hold it stronger, like I did. Now, the advantage of this is you have tape bonding with tape as opposed to just a straw bonding with a tape. So that's a double, double strength, but you know, you may not need it. Depends on how rough and wild of a driver you are. Okay, now we're ready to put this guy through and to put the other side on. But before we do, notice that this stick, see how, if we have the wheel going right at the edge here, see how floppy that is? So I cut them too long on purpose, just in case you wanted to make a different shaped car or something. But if you want to have it tight, then I would say, put that in so it's about where you want it to be. See, see the way it, it still has a little bit of play, but not very much. And then you're gonna take that thing, I'm, I'm pressing this guy in tight here. So we have what, about an eighth of an inch there? So now I'm gonna take a pencil and mark where I'm gonna cut this thing off. So then take the whole thing apart, go back to your big block here. And then here, you're gonna take this thing and you're gonna spin it with this hand right where the razor blade is pressing down is where it's gonna start cutting. And so you're just sort of like slowly cutting through. And by the time you do this enough times, it just cuts off nice and even. Okay, so now it's time to go through, put it up on the block here so the wheels aren't touching the ground. Go through the car. Bust out our little wire shim that's in the, the orange wire thing. And it's the same thing we did on the other side. Just going to cut off a piece of that wire. And then put it through the wheel. So it's about the same length on both sides. Bend it down like that. Now, when you put this thing on here, it should be nice and tight. Oh yeah, tight as a vice, it can't get light. And then again, we wanna get rid of this unsightly wire here. It just looks so ugly. But nothing that a quick little trick with a razor blade can accomplish. And on the inside, it's a little bit tight here. So I turn it so the wheel, so the wire is facing up there. And when it's facing up, you can get in there with your razor blade once again and just trim off the excess wire. Okay, now if you do this right, man, look at that. Those wheels, they just go and go and go. So this is actually a dumb old straw and a piece of wood. It's a pretty low friction thing. And it's also very light, which will be important for steering. We'll talk about that later. Okay, now the only other thing we have to do is add wheels to the back. So let's take the front wheels and leave them alone for now. And we're gonna to go to the back here and we're gonna put the motors on. Now, before we put the motors onto the car, I would suggest that you put solder onto the motor because these two tabs here are the places where, see on the finished car, those two tabs, like the white and the green here, that's where you wanna have it soldered. So you wanna have some solder on there already because remember, anytime you want things to stick together fast and tight, solder both surfaces before you do so. So I'm gonna take this guy and I'll put it upright so you can see it better here. Sorry about the noise. So there is the actual tab that we're going to be putting. There's one here and then there's one down below also. So we'll do the top one so you can see the technique. So bust out your solder guard and then remember you have your uh, copper here so Clean up your solder iron tip so it's clean. 
and then you're just going to take it and press it against the motor and then when it's sitting there, remember hot and clean, so you've got to let that tab heat up a little bit. And then just keep on feeding the solder in. Okay, so we've, we've actually put so much solder and we blocked the hole. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom, which you won't be able to see so well. So let's, uh, well, let's do it like this. See a little bit. Okay, so one motor down, let's take it out and put the other motor in. And we'll do it all over again. Now that hole through the tab is there so you can stick a wire through um, when you're starting together, it makes it stronger. But uh, depending upon how I'm doing it, I don't even use that hole in the middle because if you do a good solder job on the outside, it's plenty strong. But that's what that hole is for. Okay, so now we got solder on all those guys, which means we won't have to worry about doing that when it's on the board. The board being the card board. So we can take our little jack stand here, lay this down, and then put both of the motors on the side here. Now it doesn't matter which motor goes where, they're basically identical motors. And uh, you see the way it's got this little white thing? That's kind of, these are actually out of HP DeskJet printers, they're really nice motors. And so it was for something else that uh, we're not going to use it for. So of course what you're going to end up doing is putting big wheels on there. But at this point, um, you might want to put the motors on the board first, but I'm going to put wheels on. And the reason for putting wheels on now is it takes a lot of force to put the wheel on. You can't see it, but I've actually taken the edge of the gear. I'll show you what it looks like here. So here's the gear. and it has all the teeth in and stuff. What I did was I, I took a file, I turned the things on at high speed and I cut off a little wedge-shaped piece there. Like you know, we talked about wedges for simple machines. And what that means is when you try to push this on, instead of gouging into the wood, it forces the wood to open up. And so it makes it a tighter, tighter uh, connection. But it still takes a lot of force. So I'm recommending you put the wheels on first. And that means back and forth and just keep on going just back and forth until the hole in the, in the wood is deep enough that you can actually make it so that you can't even see the, drill, the gear anymore. And that's the best possible seal. Now, see the way it wobbles a little bit? Well, that's not a problem. You can just take it and if it wobbles a little bit that way, then pull it down. And now it wobbles less and you can, you know, just tune it up. Balance your wheels. So this one's done. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side with the other wheel. And again, same thing. I've, I broke the edge there so it should stay in really tight. But you can take off the wheel if you need to for whatever reason. Of course, when you have a crippled thumb, it's not so easy. Be very careful not to bend the shaft of the motor as you're pushing this thing on. Just little tiny motions back and forth. Okay, so that one's also is off center, so we're gonna have to... Okay, better, yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna put these guys onto the back of the car. And again, the question is, how far back? Um, in this car, I put them so they stick out over the back end just a tiny bit. Um, you could make them farther back or farther forward. I don't know, experiment around. Um, I think if they're too close to the back edge, see, you want, the cardboard's pretty weak, and so if, if you have it so if you go right at the edge, then the motor might wobble around a little bit more. But I, I really don't know. I mean, you have to just find out. But in any case, you do have to add some double stick tape here. So we're gonna get a piece of double stick tape, which is just the right length. Now, you bust out your ruler, and let's go metric, why not? Okay, so it looks like this is about 
eight millimeters or centimeters. So that would be like you could cut off a piece that's about 3.8 centimeters. So we're going to take this guy and line it up with the ruler. Bust out our, oh, let's let you guys see this a little bit better. Okay, line up the ruler. And notice, it's not zero at the end of the ruler. So you have to go to the zero on the ruler. Uh, they do that so if it wears off, you can still um, use the ruler, but it's pretty dumb because these rulers won't last long enough to wear off. Okay, so then you're gonna take it, go to 3.8 and just slice away. Again, notice I'm slicing on my chopping block, not the actual um, desk that you're working on. Okay, so then this guy is gonna be on one side. We're gonna put two of them on here, right? And so put one here and it should just barely fit Ooh, 3.8, yeah, looks okay, huh? Now let's do the other side, do another 3.8, and this guy, no, yeah, it don't matter that much. I'm gonna put 3.6, is that what this guy is? Yeah, that's 3.5. Um, I mean, it's a little bit strong if you use 3.8, but, you know, it should be okay. But you wanna put it out at the edge, and I'll explain why in just a minute. See, there's a little gap in the middle there. So press these guys down, and then take off the double stick, I mean the uh, protection. And now it's time to, for sure you put your car up on its jack stand. Because you see the way you have to have the wheel overlapping? If you try to do this on a table, and the car was like that, the wheel gets in the way, right? So you have to have it up on your stand there, and I'm gonna put it, I don't know, about this far back and try to eyeball it so it's going exactly forward. You know, you don't want to have it be either pointing in or pointing out. This is a pretty significant move to do right. So I'm gonna go like about that. Just touch it lightly, looks pretty good. And then just press like a mug. Now, the reason we put those two strips as far apart as possible is we don't want the motor to wobble back and forth. When I first built these cars, I didn't even have that big you know, foot on the bottom, that, that plate. And so, as you can see here, it's a... Uh, well, you are about to see why I did that. See the way these motors wobble back and forth? Because there's only a single piece of double stick underneath there. I mean, it's worked okay. Um, but if you have two of those guys, and they're widely spread, it's like, you know, the way a wrestler will put his legs far apart so he's more stable. Well, that's what you want to have those pieces of tape on the bottom. Okay, so we've got one piece here, one motor on, and now let's do the other one. So it's the same drill as before. I'm gonna put the double stick tape on. And uh, that would be 3.8, because they're all the same. Okay, and then we can might as well cut them both at the same time. So, two strips, twice as strong. Line up on the edge. and put them down. Now, try at this point, you have another constraint. You gotta try to get so it's lined up with the other wheel. So look carefully, make sure the wheel's not rubbing against the uh, cardboard.
Okay, and press like a mug. Okay, so we've got the two wheels on. I did an imperfect job of putting them on, but uh, that won't matter because each wheel is independent of the other one. Okay, so the next thing is going to actually be to put on the bad, you know, the electronics. Okay, we got the receiver unit, etc. So receiver unit and the sending unit look quite different from each other. So we're going to um, take a look here at how each of them looks. This is the sending unit, and the receiver unit is just a little rectangle. 